So the time has come to create the bill of materials. And uh, I use KiCad and I use it to generate a CSV format of bill of materials. But KiCad also comes with Python scripting, which means we can create a lot of customized uh, bill of materials. So let's see how I have been doing it. And maybe uh, depending on your team or your project, you can also create some customized script that can also be automated or even say integrated with a CI server to generate the bill of materials automatically. Now, before we dive into KiCad, uh, because I will not be showing the basics of uh, generating the bill of material, I highly, highly recommend a few links. The first one is by Contextual Electronics, uh, Chris Gamel. He actually shows us how to export bill of materials in KiCad 5.0. This is exactly where I learned from. And then I also recommend uh, checking out Kai Bomb. Uh, this is a configurable bomb generation tool for KiCad. The next one is Interactive Bomb. Uh, Chris Gamel once again uh, talks about how to generate a HTML uh, interactive bomb. Really, really cool tool. And once again, this is the corresponding GitHub repository for interactive HTML bomb. So I really recommend you to check them all out before we dive into the custom Python scripting. So here I am in my desktop. I've already created a folder with the four a basic KiCad file. The first one is a footprint. The next one is a netlist. The third one is the project file. And the fourth one is schematic. So let's fire that up. And when we go inside a schematic, this is uh, just one of my previous projects. We will not so much focus on uh, the schematic and the parts. But I will dive straight into this button right here, which is edit symbol fields. And uh, over here, if you notice, I have added on a lot of columns. And this is how um, I like to do it. So uh, if I enlarge the screen, you will see that uh, by default, I believe a few columns already comes, but I've gone on to add my own uh, columns, such as manufacturer, say mini minimum order. I like to do this because all the information is inside the KiCad project. And now let's say if I come to any of the symbols and if I click E for edit, you will also see the same information here. For example, the vendor, the vendor link, uh, the data sheet, of course, manufacturer, package, part number, whatever you wish, you can do it right here. The other cool thing is the menu item right after that, which says generate bill of materials. So over here, by default, you will already have some. So I'm just going to delete all of them to have a clean slate and show you that if you want to add KiCad plugins and click this plus button, it will actually bring you to the default folder where KiCad already comes with uh, some plugins. So I can uh, maybe just choose the first one as an example and you can go ahead and generate it. Um, I found this a little bit uh, cumbersome because I didn't want to generate it uh, by using uh, their default uh, CSV format because I had my own uh, custom format and this is exactly what we are going to try to do. I do want to show you the custom scripts that come with KiCad in GitHub so that we can actually go ahead and look at the source code. For example, the file that I just opened was this Python file and we can go ahead and look at it. You will see some similarities in all the script files. They are all importing this KiCad netlist reader, CSV, sys, and they are also uh, generating a net, a variable, and then they will basically go and try to iterate from there. Now, before we dive into the Python script, I am going to create a file that is needed for the Python script, which is the XML file. So if I come to the plugin uh, menu right here, there is this generate button. And once you click it, notice what happens. And you can just close it after that. Now, if I come to the folder, you will see that there is this new file called uh, XML. Basically, all the netlist details are all here. 
And uh, while we create our Python script, it will read from this file. So it's very important to create this XML file. I have no idea how to create it on the command line. So I just need to click that generate button. So after this, uh, let me go ahead and create a folder called BOM bomb. And over here, uh, let's create a new file called bomb.py. And this is where we'll be writing our own custom script. Now, as usual, I said that uh, it's always good to look at the existing plugins. So from here, I'm going to just copy some code. So the import code are very important because this is the library that we need. So I'm going to paste it right here. And after that, we will go ahead and copy a bunch more. For example, we need to copy this variable net equals to KiCad netlist reader. This is exactly where it will start reading the XML file. So I'm going to copy that and this uh, try catch as well. And finally, this uh, out variable, because uh, we are going to create a CSV writer object. That looks good, but uh, as you see, there is this import KiCad netlist reader. So where does this come from? Well, if we go back to the plugins folder on the Python scripts, you will see this file right here. So this is where all the functions that we will be calling in our custom script reside. So I'm, I am also going to create this file inside the same folder. And not to worry, I'm just going to dump the entire code here so that uh, from this import statement, it can basically read this file. So after this, I am going to write my CSV and uh, the first line of the CSV are all the column headers. So that will basically be out dot right row. And it is simply going to be an array that we can define ourselves. So if we go back to the KiCad project and we can come here, we can either use these same fields or we can define our own. So I am just going to copy and paste a bunch of the column ones. These are just a bunch of strings. And this is where we are going to start querying each of the components and the groups. So let me just copy all of this. And after this, we are going to do the same thing. We are going to write row. So let's go column by column. The designator here is uh, simply the refs uh, that we can uh, write as. So for the second column, it will be C dot get value. So you see, it's already prompting me because uh, it is referring to the KiCad netlist reader file. The next one is the quantity, which is also given as a length of the group. So this is basically the Python code. Now for the rest of the fields, it is not defined in KiCad netlist reader. This is because uh, they are custom fields that I wrote here myself by pressing the add field button. So for that, we can simply refer to the string of the name of the field. For example, we can say c.get field and we can simply refer to the package, which is exactly the field name as what I have defined inside KiCad. So why don't I go ahead and use the get field function to do the rest of the columns? Something like this. Now, as you can see, get data sheet is already defined in the import uh, library function, and it will basically get the field called data sheet. So this is a super, super simple CSV bomb file. So why don't we generate it? So here I am inside the command line. Let's just look at the folder structure. So as you can see inside the folder bomb, I have the script that I wrote and the library file, KiCad netlist reader. So if you want to generate the CSV file from the command line, it is simply Python. And then we refer to the Python file. And then we also have to refer to the XML file that we generated. And finally, the location where we want the CSV file, the generated CSV file to reside. And that's it. Let's try that out. And now if we do a tree, we will see that a CSV file has been created. And there you see the CSV file is created right from the command line. Now I like to do it from the command line. I like to generate it from the command line using uh, the Python command right here, because this means that I can hook this command up to a continuous integration server.
and then it can automatically generate the bomb based on the XML file. The other thing that I love to do is create a make file. So I'm gonna quickly create that and I'm gonna define a phony and the first command or the default command will simply be bomb where I will delete the previous bomb created. And finally, the Python command, which is right here. So all I need to do now is just say make bomb or simply just make because it's the default command and it will create the bomb. Now, if you look at the bomb that we created, it is not that dynamic. Uh, there are certain things that we usually do after we import the bomb to say a spreadsheet application such as Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. There are things like, you know, like total cost or the grand total or also kind of see which is the most expensive item or group them by category. There are some manual post processing that we do. And this is where I really like the Python scripting because this makes it all automatic. So for this, why don't we try to add in something called the total, which will basically take the unit price times the quantity. So for this, I, I am going to define a total cost uh, function, and this will simply be the unit cost here. And the second parameter will be the quantity, which is a uh, length of the group. And why don't we quickly go ahead and write the total cost function. Once again, it will take in the unit cost and the quantity, some error checking if the unit cost does not exist, else return a float number, which is in currency, unit cost times the quantity. And uh, that's it. So this is uh, what I really, really like about being a little bit dynamic. I'm missing a comma here. So now all I need to do is come here and run make, and let's check whether our bomb CSV now has the total. So I'm gonna open it up and there you see, it has the total. So for, for some items that has two, so for example, the switch here, I had like a couple of switches, it actually times it. So I do not need to do this manually. Finally, I'd like to also show how I do some uh, analytics uh, based on this Python file, analytics on the entire bomb. For example, finding the grand total cost. I will also do a simple analysis on the total items and the unique items. So let me define the variables. Now inside the for loop, this is where I will calculate them. So the grand total cost will be an addition of all the total cost. So I will basically copy this entire line again. Now the unique items will simply be plus one and the total items in this case will simply be uh, plus the length of the group. Now, of course, there are other analysis you can add on. This is just a very, very simple example. What I like to do is produce another separate JSON file. So I'll quickly initialize the data structure and call it bomb. And inside the bomb, I will have uh, the three data uh, that we analyzed. And finally, I will write them into a separate JSON file. Maybe I will have it inside the bomb directory, data.json as out file, json.dump, data comma out file. And finally, I do want it in a pretty JSON format with two indentations. Now, because this is inside this one single bomb.py, we don't really have to do much. So just notice here inside the bomb directory, we only have the generated file.csv. So it should generate one more file called data.json. Why don't we run the make command? So just simply make, I am having an error. Yes, of course, I need to import the JSON library. So simply do import JSON. Let me try that again and seems like it has worked. And there you see, you have all the post-process items. 
So that's it about Python scripting, custom Python scripting with uh, KiCad to generate bill of materials. Do you also use the same method to create a customized bill of materials? Uh, do you also do some post-processing to bring out some analytics? Now, I like to do it this way because uh, it just makes sure that I'm not uh, doing much manual process, which I might forget for some projects. So I wanted to have a kind of a standardized process for all my projects. So let me know what you think. And um, is there, maybe there are some better ways of doing it. And I would love to know. Let's share. Thank you so much.